Glycogen metabolism involves glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen, and glycogenesis, which is the synthesis of glycogen. The conversion of glycogen to glucose involves three steps. First, glycogen phosphorylase removes a glucose residue from the non-reducing end of a glycogen chain through phosphorylysis reaction, which preserves some energy of the glycosidic bond in the formation of glucose 1-phosphate. The phosphorylysis reaction also requires an essential cofactor called pyridoxal phosphate or PLP, which acts as a general acid catalyst. Glycogen phosphorylase acts repetitively on the non-reducing ends of glycogen branches until it reaches a point four glucose residues away from an alpha 1 to 6 branch point. Next, the branching enzyme catalyzes two successive reactions that transfer branches. First, the transferase activity shifts a block of three glucose residues from the branch to a nearby non-reducing end, reattaching it to the alpha 1 to 4 linkage. The single glucose residue remaining at the branch point in alpha 1 to 6 linkage is then released as free glucose by the debranching enzyme's alpha 1 to 6 glucosidase activity. Glucose 1-phosphate is then converted to glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. In skeletal muscles, glucose 6-phosphate would enter glycolysis and serve as an energy source for muscle contraction. In liver, glucose 6-phosphate enters the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum through the T1 transporter, and it is hydrolyzed by glucose 6-phosphatase into glucose and inorganic phosphate, which are transported out of the ER lumen through T2 and T3 transporters, and exit liver cells or hepatocytes through the GLUT2 transporter in the plasma membrane. The liver releases glucose when the blood glucose level drops. Glycogenesis takes place in most tissues, but is most prominent in the liver and skeletal muscles. First, glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate by hexokinase during glycolysis. Next, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 1-phosphate by phosphoglucomutase. Then, glucose 1-phosphate is condensed with uridine triphosphate into a sugar nucleotide uridine diphosphate glucose, or UDB glucose, releasing inorganic pyrophosphate. This condensation reaction is carried out by the enzyme UDB glucose pyrophosphorylase, which is named for the reverse reaction. Pyrophosphate is rapidly hydrolyzed into two inorganic phosphate by inorganic pyrophosphatase. Next, glycogen synthase transfer glucose residue from UDP glucose to a non-reducing end of a branch glycogen molecule. To initiate a new glycogen molecule, glycogen synthase requires a primer called glycogenin, which transfers glucose residue from UDP glucose to hydroxyl group of tyrosine-194. After glycogenin extends about 7 glucose residues, glycogen synthase can then take over. Glycogen synthase cannot make the alpha 1 to 6 bonds found at the branch points of glycogen. These are formed by the glycogen branching enzyme, which catalyzes the transfer of terminal fragment of 6 to 7 glucose residues from the non-reducing end of a glycogen branch to the carbon-6 hydroxyl group of a glucose residue at a more interior position of the glycogen chain. Branching makes glycogen molecule more soluble and increases the sites accessible to glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthase. The rate-limiting step of glycogenolysis is glycogen phosphorylase, and the rate-limiting step of glycogenesis is glycogen synthase. These two enzymes are subject to a series of hormonal regulation. Glycogenolysis is promoted by glucagon in the liver and epinephrine in muscle cells. Both hormones bind to G-protein couple receptor, which activates adenylyl cyclase that converts ATP into cyclic AMP, which in turn activates PKA or protein kinase A. Active PKA activates phosphorylase kinase B, which in turn activates glycogen phosphorylase A, thus promoting glycogenolysis. All these steps are part of a cascade mechanism which largely amplifies the initial signal. Both phosphorylase kinase B and glycogen phosphorylase are activated by phosphorylation. However, glycogen synthase A is inactivated by phosphorylation. Glycogenesis is promoted by the insulin cascade. First, insulin binds to receptor tyrosine kinase, which phosphorylates the insulin receptor substrate 1, or IRS1, which in turn activates phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase, or PI3K, that converts 
phosphatidylinositol bisphosphate in the membrane to phosphatidylinositol triphosphate, which activates a protein kinase known as PDK1 that in turn activates protein kinase B or PKB. PKB phosphorylates glycogen synthase kinase 3, preventing glycogen synthase 3 from inactivating glycogen synthase. In the absence of insulin, active form of glycogen synthase kinase 3 will phosphorylate glycogen synthase A primed by casein kinase 2. Phosphorylation of glycogen synthase A would deactivate it. Insulin also activates an important regulator known as protein phosphatase 1, which dephosphorylates glycogen synthase and activates it, promoting glycogenesis. Protein phosphatase 1 or PP1 is also allosterically activated by glucose 6-phosphate. Activated protein phosphatase 1 can also dephosphorylate phosphorylase kinase B and glycogen phosphorylase, inhibiting glycogenolysis. Protein phosphatase 1 is inactivated by PKA. Overall, the regulation of glycogen metabolism mostly involves dephosphorylation and phosphorylation reactions. And it is important to know whether the phosphorylated or dephosphorylated form is active. All the inactive forms are labeled in white and all the active forms are labeled in color. The intermediate of glycogenesis, UDB glucose, can also be oxidized into UDP glucuronic acid, which is an important precursor to many biosynthetic pathways, including the synthesis of L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C, glycosaminoglycans, and proteoglycans. UDB glucuronate also binds to bilirubin, which is a waste product of the red blood cells, making it soluble in water. Glycogen storage disease is a metabolic disorder caused by enzyme deficiencies in either glycogenolysis and glycogenesis. Type 1 glycogen storage disease is known as von Gierke. It is caused by a deficiency in glucose 6-phosphatase, resulting in the liver being unable to properly break down stored glycogen, leading to severe low blood sugar. Type 2 glycogen storage disease is known as Pompe disease. It is caused by a deficiency in lysosomal alpha-glucosidase enzyme, resulting in an accumulation of glycogen in lysosome, leading to damages in muscle and nerve cells throughout the body.